Hello and welcome to Moments with the Master. Um, we are going to look at the readings for the uh, first Sunday after Epiphany, which will be the, um, the 8th, I believe, of January. And um, they are uh, Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9, Psalm 29, 1 through 4 and 9 through 11, Acts 10, 34 through 38, and Matthew 3, 13 through 17. As always, we encourage you to read them all. Um, I'm Father Josh from St. Martin's Celtic Catholic Church in Concord, North Carolina. And I am joined by my brother, freaking White, um, in Olean, New York, um, where I'm sure it was brutally cold last week or week before. Last when... week it was. Today it's uh, 60 degrees. Really? Wow. I don't think about those kind of temperatures and... <clears throat> it's because you know why that is i'm sorry that's that has no relevance to what we're talking about so uh the first sunday after epiphany so uh, freaking christopher did um the the readings for epiphany um which is january 6th so this is uh the second the, the sunday after epiphany is always um the baptism of our lord jesus christ and so Oddly enough, we talk about the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, which is, I'm not, I'm going to read the, the Matthew passage, which is super familiar, but I want to just talk about baptism. And um, I don't have a real, uh, I'll come back around that. So Matthew 3, 13 through 17, then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he, John, consented. And when Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Um, and of course, after this, Jesus goes immediately into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Um, and after that, returns back to John where he is proclaimed the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Um, so the, the, the brief, and I just want to touch this briefly, why was Jesus baptized? Because John was doing a baptism of repentance. But of course, Jesus didn't need to repent because he had done no sin. Um, but he says we need to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And I think that idea of fulfillment is extremely important because basically what Jesus is doing here is rewalking the path that Israel took um, and redeeming what they did because God had given them a very clear and specific mission to establish his kingdom on earth. And uh, we talked about that um, with the epiphany thing. And so just like the Israelites crossed through the Red Sea, sort of a baptism. Um, so Jesus crosses through the Jordan and is baptized. Um, he is, by the way, his um, ministry is affirmed by two witnesses as required by the Torah. Hmm. Um, then he goes into the wilderness. So just as the Israelites went into the wilderness and were there for 40 years. So Jesus spends 40 days in the wilderness being tested by God or by Satan, rather, um, really. Um, and where the um, Israelites, it would be interesting. Like, I wonder, gosh, I've never done this. This just popped into my head. But I wonder if there were like three major um temptations or if there's like if there's anything that the israelites experienced in the desert that correlates with what um, jesus experienced in the desert um because I, I immediately think of uh, water from the rock like they complain so you've got bread and you've got water so that's or or manna like they complained about food um you've got um you've got the the serpents the fiery serpents, and I don't remember what precipitated that particular judgment. Um, real, real quick, Jesus was tempted by bread, by power, and by proving himself by a miracle. So it was casting himself off the top of the temple, mm -hmm. bow down to me and I will give you everything. 
Um, so it was um, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, right? Um, I mean, you can kind of see, like, Moses struck the rock. That's kind of him failing pride. at jumping out at the pride. Um, uh, the Israelites failed repeatedly when they got hungry. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the power thing, when um, you could say when... when Well, they did bow down to an idol. They bowed they down. Did, they did bow down to an idol. Yeah, they did. How fascinating. I've never thought about mm. that until this very moment. Um, but anyway, and then and then he comes back, and just as they came and crossed the Jordan into the promised land, so Jesus recrosses the Jordan into the promised land and establishes the kingdom of God on earth, um, his kingdom. Anyway, but um, I so we both grew up, Protestant. Um, I was Protestant quite a bit longer than Chris was. And in the Protestant churches that we grew up in, like baptism. Okay. So I grew up Presbyterian for a while and Presbyterian churches actually baptize infants. Um, so I was christened, um, was the word we would have used. I think you, you were, were, you were Josh and yeah, and you were Chris in the law. Um, but most of the churches that I've been in from my teenage years and on were are or were um what we would call adult baptism type churches, like not adult baptism, but believers baptism. Believers baptism, thank you. That you need to make an actual profession of faith before you are baptized. Um, and in those churches, baptism has no, there's nothing that you get out of it. It's literally, it's just, it's symbolic and an act of obedience. Um, like I taught many years, just as Jesus chose to be baptized, so you should choose to be baptized. An ordinance, I think is what the Baptist called it. Yes, which is hilarious in a church that fights all the time that their two main things are called ordinance. Um, so um, is that kind of how you experienced baptism? Absolutely. Up, uh, the Protestant church. And they, and they actually, they went out of their way almost all, two things, quick things. They went out of their way to make a big deal that they weren't doing what Catholics were doing a lot of the time. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Aaron went to a, a Pentecostal church recently and they were doing a baptism and they baptized only in the name of Jesus. And they made a huge deal about that. Like they talked about that at length. I'm not sure if they're like monists or what, but um but yeah, they made a, uh, you, you might know more about it than I do because I, I thought that they were Trinitarian, but they may not be, or at least this particular Pentecostal? church. Pentecostal? Of course they are. This particular church. Oh, it may be. I don't know. I, like, like not Trinitarians in the sense of, not monists, um, modalists, that God presents oh. himself in three ways, but it's just one God. That may be. I, I don't know. I'd have to know what church it was. and. <laughs> I know a little more about it, but um, anyway, so part of like, as I got farther along, one of my, my personal struggles, like I've always believed in baptism and it's, it's, it's necessity, except that if, if there's nothing that comes of it, then why bother? Um, like we would say, and and actually Catholics believe this too. Like you don't have to be baptized, I guess, to um, go to heaven. Um, but so, how would you describe what we as Catholics or Celtic Catholics um, believe about baptism? If I might talk about another sacrament. For a moment, um, really, all of the other sacraments, um, God can forgive sins without me talking to a priest. Um, I can. There, there is no need for a priest to be involved if I get married. Um, that can be done between me and the person with whom I am. I am marrying. Um, well, you go to a justice of the peace. Go to a justice of the peace. Justice of the peace isn't even necessary. There, I mean, 
Adam and Eve sure didn't have one, but I hesitate to say that they were not married. Um, all of these, I don't, I don't have to have anybody pray for me, even though I am commanded to, I don't have to do any of these things. Um, so the, the, and that's part of what you're saying. So for baptism specifically, I believe that I am being washed. I believe that God has joined himself in some special way to the water and the act and the person performing the act and that something happens, that I am being born into the family of God. It can happen apart from that, but but in that instance, I am being born into the family of God in the way that an infant is born into his human family. And so we would practice. So I, something I heard, like I, I went to a um, walk to Emmaus uh, years ago and was talking to a Methodist pastor about sacraments. And he 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 said his his description was they are sacred moments, that there is a grace of God bestowed in them that is different and special from just other things. Now, we baptize infants as well, um, which not, well, you know, it's funny, every, pretty much every church that treats baptism as a sacrament also baptizes infants. I don't know of any sacramental uh, church that doesn't baptize infants. Um, real the, quick, real quick, yes, this go is ahead. not super important, but. Most churches, however, that do communion don't commune infants, but the Orthodox and the Lutheran, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America do hmm. continue. Well, and so there's, and I, I shared some stuff about this in the in the prison newsletter, but the, the um, I mean, it, it's like really, it goes way back and it's extremely early in the life of the church that we see people writing about baptizing infants, like with, like in the first hundred years we have writings and, and I grew up with this. I mean, I went to seminary. Well, you know, they don't baptize infants in the Bible, except that there are multiple instances where someone came to faith and it says like Cornelius was baptized in his his whole whole household. household. Now, Somebody might say, well, how do you know there were infants there? And I would say, how do you know there weren't infants there? Apparently, they were baptizing everybody. So we don't know that there were not. We don't know that there were. But what we know is that the Bible does not deny the baptism of infants. And so so why why do it let me I'll, I'll ask the question and let you answer why baptize infants if they cannot make their own decision it's i mean i i would say it's despite how we were raised even for adults it's not about um uh it's not about them it's about the it's about god and the church making a covenant with them a and b when you and I had our believers baptism, the level at which we understood Christianity was so poor as to be damn near heretical. Um, not our fault. Wasn't anything wrong with that. We were just young and there was the particular church that we were in. Um, if I had to be baptized every time that I came to a more real understanding of Jesus and my relationship to him, I would just live in a pool. (laughs) Yes. And, um, and there is that aspect of the connection with the communion of God saints. That is what we are. Is what we're doing. Um, You know, it's, it's almost like I'm I'm interrupting again, even, even with marriage where we say it has to be with an adult, not necessarily. I mean, yes, an actual marriage, but betrothal, which is a whole different thing than what we think of when we think of engagement, betrothal was happening in infancy. There was a promise made by one part, one family to another family, and the infants had no choice in that whatsoever. Right. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Well, and so the, 
Now, the 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 practice of what so what Jesus was doing here would have been the Hebrew word for baptism was mikvah, um, which is a noun and a verb. So when you go to Israel today, um, every synagogue, so God um, had them put a mikvah in the temple. It was the brass sea, and that was a place for ritual cleansing for temple for temple purposes. And then um, as the synagogue system developed, every synagogue, excuse me, my nose is really itchy. Every synagogue had a mikvah where people would go to, um, to do a ritual cleansing before they went into the synagogue to worship God. If I got an issue. So like, I've, I'm just, I was just reading the, uh, the passage from uh, Matthew you know, if you've got, if someone has something against you, go fix it. And before you take your gift to the altar, that would be that, that, that idea is the idea of mikvah that you, you would take, you would go to this person. You would say, I realize we've got an issue. I want to correct it. You would go and you would mikvah together, or you would realize, Hey, in this last week, okay, Hey, Yom Kippur was six months ago and I haven't been able to get to the temple but I do, I'm going to go worship God. And so I'm going to go through this, this thing as a way to show God that I certainly have recognized this. And it is a way for me to wash this off. And so that's what John is doing. It's not a baptism for salvation. Nobody has said, oh, I'm choosing to follow the Messiah because there was no Messiah um, yet. Well, I mean, he was there, but they didn't know that yet. He hadn't died um, and risen again. So it was a mikvah for repentance. They were saying, I realize I've sinned. I am cleansing myself in order to prepare myself for, because that's what he was preaching. The, the Messiah is coming. He was the forerunner. And so I love that idea Yeah, um, that, so you were saying you would live in a pool. Certainly you wouldn't want to do that. You would be a very wrinkly Christian, but maybe we should all be wrinkly Christians. Um, that we live in this state of recognition that I am constantly growing and constantly um, developing and still sinning. And that when I have those moments of realization, recognition, and repentance, that I would, st that I would um, be baptized. Uh, now we use the word baptism to reference a once a a single moment um thing it's special but you know call it whatever you want to call it mikvah call it mikvah i love the idea of getting of of marking those moments in that way i tell a story about my uh my oldest who was baptized very young like i think he was 5 um it was basically infant baptism, um, but it was in a Baptist church. So they were okay with it because he could talk. Um, and, but I'm, he doesn't even remember it. And then years later, as a teenager, young teenager, went to, went to youth camp, had this whole moment, came back and said, I got saved and I want to be baptized. And his, the youth pastor at the church was extremely nervous about coming to talk to me about that. And I was like, look, if, if he had, you know, whether if he had this spiritual moment and wants to be immersed as a way to recognize it. And look, if it helps your spiritual journey, I will get you wet every single week. Um, I just don't have an issue with that personally. Um, I also think there is value in because yes, I think being baptized, by the way, one of the things I love about the Celtic Catholic Church is we do sort of an immersion um we even with the infants. Um and but I think there is some value to because there still comes a point where everybody has what I like to call that crisis of faith where they realize, I don't believe this because this is just what I've been taught. I believe this because I, I know this to be true now. And I think there's some value in recognizing that. It is certainly not a 
baptism for salvation, but a um, a recognition of a spiritual milestone. I will let you say your piece because I don't think you agree with me on that. But um, that's I, I mean what I love about the body of Christ. I I I I don't disagree. Uh, um, I do think that there is, as the creed says, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Um, and, and I, I, I appreciate that, uh, that they do have, like, for example, before COVID, uh, most Catholic churches had a font and you would, uh, with baptismal water in it, and you would cross yourself when you came in, um, because you were, you know, resignifying yes. in that way. Yeah. Um, by the way, one of the coolest baptismal um, fonts that I've ever seen. It wasn't a font. It was a full baptistry. So when I was in Dodge City, they built um, the Cathedral of Our Lady of Guadalupe right across the street from the first, uh, it, was, it wasn't the, it was First Southern Baptist Church of Dodge City. Um, and I went over to meet the priest when they finished building it and they took us on a tour. It's a gorgeous facility. Um, but their baptistry, so their church, it was built in the round. So they had a round mm -hmm. stage in the middle seats all the way around but off to one side but it was inside the sanctuary was a giant giant's probably the wrong word a large cross saint andrew's cross shaped baptistry it was on the floor so that so it wasn't particularly deep um but it was built in such a way that the priest could stand on the outside somebody could get in and kneel and he could immerse them backwards mm -hmm. or take a child and i was like I like it. One of these days, if I ever get to build a church, that's what I'm doing. I saw a, I saw a, a font version of a Baptist uh, for baptism once where um, there was a chain. This very old. There was a chain uh, that led from a figure of a dove to the top that covered the the font. And when you pulled the chain down so that the dove was descending the top came up and then you could access the baptismal water to. Oh, baptize. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, so baptism, super important. Go do it. If you feel the need and desire, um, I think there's value in doing those kind of things. Um, and I'm going to end with this. One of my favorite comedians who really fell off the wagon back in the eighties or nineties, but, um, I don't know that he was ever on it, but go uh, ahead. That's true. But he did. He, he was, he was extremely funny. Um, and talked about, um, you know, how all these people, they argue about baptism and stuff. And he's like, I've, I have, I have invented the perfect baptistry that's going to solve this for everybody. It's going to be about 10 feet long, three inches deep. And so your, 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 uh, your Baptist, your Holy Rollers, your Pentecostals, your, all those people can lie down and roll through it and they can get wet all <laughs> over. And then, your your Catholics, your Methodists, your Presbyterians, they can stand along the side and they'll get sprinkled and everybody's happy. And um, that, I think, is not the way to do it, but I thought it was funny. Anyway, <laughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you for setting an example for us in baptism. Lord, thank you for blessing us with the community of your body um, through baptism. And Lord, help us to share the unity of your church with others. In your holy name, amen. Amen.